Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Welcome today to my review of the updated Tauher Dive Watch by Heinrich. Now this is the third Heinrich watch that I have reviewed on the channel over the last three years. The original Tauher, which I really enjoyed. The Tower 2, which I felt was trying to do a bit too much all at the same time, and today what they're calling the Tower Sport. It's based on the Tower 1 case and bracelet, but with some new updated colorways, including glorious 1970s orange. Now you saw the pop-up. This video is sponsored by Heinrich Watches. The owner, Wolfgang Heinrich, got in touch with me a couple of months ago and he showed me pictures of these two. And I do have a bit of a thing for orange watches at the moment, so I said, yes, please send them over. These two are prototypes, I'll be sending them back, but they are now available for purchase from the Heinrich website. I will, of course, leave a link in the description of the video. Now, I did have a few complaints about the original watch. Will they still apply to this new sport version? Let's flip the camera and find out. Okay, I think it's a good idea today to start off with a quick look at the Heinrich website and a look at the four different versions of this watch that are available. It's the same case and bracelet, etc., etc., but there are two different dials and two different case finishes. The orange one they're calling the Sport. It's available in stainless steel or black DLC for 50 euros more. The gold hand version they're calling the LX, again, either in stainless steel or DLC for 50 euros more. Now, personally, I think some of these versions are more successful than others. I think the Sport dial goes well with either case finish, but the LX looks much better in stainless steel than it does in DLC. But that's just me. What do you reckon? Leave me a comment. Let me know which version you think looks the best and which version you think looks the worst. Prices, as you saw, 850 euros or 900 euros. Now, no entry level today, therefore, but I think this one has a number of interesting touches and an incredible level of detail that go towards justifying that price tag. Let's move on to the packaging and the first of those nice touches that I just noted. Your packaging matches your case finishing. The stainless steel sport has a grey line box. The DLC the LX has a black line box. They're neat little boxes. I've seen these on Fairland Murray's and Isotopes, to name just a few. Two years warranty, by the way. Now, these two watches are essentially the same. Same case, crown bezel, crystal bracelet, and even the overall dial shape is the same. The only thing different is the hour hand, the minute hand, and the color scheme. But my goodness, they look nothing like each other at times. It's amazing what a couple of small changes, particularly to the handset, does to transform the look of the watch. The Sport, with its big fence post hands and classic 70s orange, looks like a proper diving tool, but the sharp hands of the LX make it look far dressier, even in this DLC black. I will, of course, show you both watches over the course of the review, jumping back and forth as appropriate. Both watches have exactly the same dimensions, though, but I prefer the orange, so that's the one I'm going to show you here. 41mm in diameter, 13.4mm thick, with a lug-to-lug -lug of 48mm. Lug width is 20 You can see those big, broad shoulders on the case. The bracelet does taper down to under 18 and then back up to just over 20mm and a fairly chunky clasp today as well. Sized up for my 7-inch wrist, they weigh in at 155 grams each. Water resistance, as advertised in the dial, is 200 meters. It's double dome sapphire crystal with double anti-reflective coating, top and bottom today. And the movement in the back is a Salita SW200-1 Elaborate Grade. The case is very nicely finished, so much so that it's almost a shame to then coat it in black so that you can't see the finishing. Lugs are drilled for easy strap changes. The bracelet drops straight out from those lugs, by the way, you can see that there, helping it wear nicely, or at least nicer than you might think, with a case as flat as this one. There's a high polish chamfer at the top of the mid case and a tiny little high polish edge to each of those lug tips as well. And check the bezel. There's a wave pattern running through that, which not only looks pretty, but means it's very easy to grip, as is the unguarded knurled crown. And once again, look at the crown itself. The Heinrich Lion logo has been paint filled. You'll see that paint filled technique at various points throughout the video including on the case back, or at least the stainless steel one. It's a lovely looking case back. The wave pattern you saw on the bezel being replicated either side of the brand name and logo. Now, these two watches are prototypes. They've been around the world a couple of times already, so do forgive the scratches. There's also a couple of bits and pieces under the dial that you'll see from the macros later on. Now, the black one isn't paint filled because what would be the point when you're covering it with a black coating? You can see though, 
all watches have individual serial numbers. They're only making 100 of each different version, so only 400 watches in total. As noted, Celita SW200-1 Elaborate grade version that is one rung up from the standard version. It's adjusted in three positions and has an accuracy of plus or minus seven seconds per day, up to a maximum variance of plus or minus 20 seconds per day, regardless of the position. 26 dual hacking and hand winding Swiss made auto with a roughly 40 hour power reserve. Now I hear Celita had a bit of a tragedy at their factory recently. It got hit by a tornado, killing one of their employees. My condolences to all at Salita. They weren't easy movements to get a hold of in the first place. They're going to be even harder to get a hold of for the next number of months, I would imagine. The bracelet is also very interesting, very different. No one can accuse Heinrich of producing a generic looking watch. Look at the angle at which the bracelet leaves the case. It drops straight down onto the wrist, ameliorating that flat case profile. Articulated end links as well, and all of those little links are individually machined. So this, therefore, is a 15-link bracelet. Heinrich call it a mesh. Not quite sure I'd call it a mesh, but yeah, it kind of wears like a mesh in some ways, especially as the links are quite small. Screws hold the whole thing together. I had no problem sizing either watch, even with the DLC coating, which can sometimes be an issue. The links, however, were a little bit stiff and sticky if you forced them into funny positions, but they settled down again once on wrist. Now, the clasp is a big and chunky one. Milled upper, milled scissor with decoration, which you don't see very often. Again, a nice touch. It's one of those ratcheting dive extensions clasps as I'm sure you've spotted. Now the dives extension becomes your micro adjustment effectively. There are pros and there are cons to this type of clasp but I'll be honest I see more cons than pros. I'm not a fan so it will be featuring in the moans and niggles section later on. At least it's also paint filled on this stainless example. The lion's face looks fantastic and it's just the right size for the clasp. Let's get into the dials and the handsets then and let's have a look at each of these two watches separately because they are different in terms of overall look even if not much has actually changed. The LX has those sharp Dauphine style hands in brushed gold matching the brushed gold edges to the applied indices. There's even more gold because every minute mark at the 6, 7, 8 and 9 if you see what I mean is also in gold. This means that the dial is actually asymmetric, but you'd be hard pushed to tell if I hadn't just pointed it out. It's a neat trick. Perhaps the circular date complication at six helps it look symmetrical rather than asymmetrical. It's recessed into a raised dial section, which on the LX has a gunmetal gold color to it and a pronounced sunburst effect. The brand logo, model name, and water resistance sit in the central circle and are printed on top of almost perceptibly small concentric circles. It looks like a tiny piece of vinyl under a loop and here under my macro lens. So lots and lots of circles here of all different sizes. Now, if you hadn't guessed it by the name, Heinrich are a German company. So these watches proudly have made in Germany either side of the index at six. So when it comes to the sport model, most of the gold is replaced by orange, the main circle of which does not have a sunburst effect. So again, sportier rather than dressy. And there are no vinyl grooves in the center either. It's flat matte black. Again, there are printed orange rectangles on each six, seven, eight, and nine. And the hour and minute hand are half orange, half white, but opposites if you see what I mean. And the second hand has one final burst of orange at its tip. Again, just so much detail here, which you don't necessarily take in at first glance. Now the shared sapphire bezel insert by comparison is a little bit plain Jane, but perhaps that's just as well given how complex everything else is. It's graded to 15 and has numerals at the 15, 30 and 45, and a triangle at the 60 slash zero. What it lacks in flash though, it more than makes up for in flecto, as I'm sure you've already noticed from some of the dynamic shots. So there we are, let's pull back and look at both side by side. It's amazing what a difference this switch of hands makes, isn't it? They look like very different watches, even though they're actually very similar. And it's similar but different after Dart 2, BGW9 and a reasonable amount of it in both. As noted, these are prototypes, so perhaps they will be even more loomtastic for production units. It's not bad though, end of the test, both watches still visible, still legible. On wrist, they wear surprisingly well, but they wear larger than the dimensions suggest. The big broad shoulders to the case and the intense dial patterning see to that. They feel bigger and they look bigger. The case is almost entirely flat, but it's a straight drop from those drilled lugs and the bracelet links are small, so they still hug the wrist nicely. You're not short of wrist presence with either of these two, are you? The orange is intense and the black is, well, it's black. 
I'm glad they went with 20 mil lugs though. A 22 mil bracelet, even with a taper, would have dominated the watch head too much in my opinion. Now, I got quite lucky in terms of size. This is how they sit on me, both with the same configuration, both with the diver's extension fully closed. This is probably how I would choose to wear it, even with traditional micro adjust holes. But I do consider myself lucky, you might not get so lucky. Pocket shots to finish, stainless steel and orange is definitely my pick of the four. I think it's the color version that matches the case and the bracelet best. But I know black watches have a real cult following, plus there aren't all that many of them around, so I'm sure Wolfgang will sell a few of these as well. All right, moans and niggles. I've got a couple of niggles and a moan. These watches are quite intense. Strong colors, multifaceted dials, chamfered edges here and there in the case, massively complex bracelet links, and that's before I even talk about the sapphire bezel insert and the mad purple AR upper and under coating on the sapphire crystal. They're very much in your face, even in black DLC. Now, some people will like that. It might be a bit too much for some others. As I said earlier on, I'm not sure that the gold version, the LX, really suits the DLC. If I was ranking them from one to four, this one would be my number four. But I appreciate that's just me. Not everyone will have the same perspective on the color versions. My moan for the day though is the clasp. It's well made, it's even decorated. You don't see that very often at all. And I love the paint fill on the stainless version. I just don't love these clasps. I think they look good in a catalogue, but they don't work well on wrist. 99.5% of the people who buy this watch are not going to put this watch over a wetsuit. That means that 99.5% of the people that buy this watch will be left with a single sizing option or a very awkward sharp edged open clasp if they do want to use this extension as an adjustment mechanism and not just as a wetsuit extension. I'd rather have a conventional clasp or better still on a watch costing $900, something with internal on the fly adjustment. But I'm not actually going to complain about the price today. Two year warranty, elaborate grade Solita, sapphire bezel insert, good loom, lovely crystal, complex bracelet, all those paint filled touches on the clasp, the crown, the case back, and all of it made in Germany in Forsheim, plus limited release. I think the price is actually really fair. My pick is definitely the orange and stainless steel, super 70s case shape, super 70s color. It's a ton of fun if you're into loud retro divers. So there you have it, two new dial versions of the Tauher, two new case finishes of the Tauher. I reckon three out of the four are hits, one of them is perhaps a bit of a miss, but the hits hit pretty hard, especially this orange one. It's definitely creeping up in terms of price though, and I would love to see a different clasp. I'm just not a fan of this one. If you wanna check out my review of its big brother, click here, or of its cousin, click here. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. I hope to see you again in a future video.